Okay, today I thought I would tell you a story that I left out of my origin story. Um, this is the story about my gay ex-fiance. Um, I left him out of my origin story because I wanted that to be about me and, and like, my physical and emotional journey with, I don't know, just without him. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep his name out of it, let's just call him, uh, I don't know. I'll just call him him. Um, but a lot of you are gonna know who he is anyway, so whatever. Um, I went to school with him and I was friends with him because of a mutual friend and uh, we hung out. In school he was a spaz and a like, attention whore and uh, but he was normal outside of school so that's kind of how we became friends because I was just like alright so he's not as insane as he tries to portray himself to be. Um, alright, let's m move this along. Anyway, so yeah, we were friends, blah blah blah. Um, he was bisexual or whatever for a long time, and then he was gay, and then he was bi again. And actually, when we got together, he was supposed to be gay. And I remember him saying something like, because we worked together um, at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, I remember him saying something like, yeah, I'm gay, but I would still sleep with you. Or something like that. And uh, that night we ended up hanging out and we got drunk and we ended up sleeping together. And it was whatever and then it happened again and it was better and so we just kind of started doing that like and then that developed into a relationship so we were uh, like um boyfriend girlfriend uh for like a year and then um, he proposed to me, and it was the shittiest proposal ever, like, um, <laughs> we had gotten into one of our many, many fights, and he went to get cigarettes, and when he came back, decided he would propose to me with a ring that he had bought me that Christmas. Um, so, yeah, and it didn't even fit, so had to be resized also because he just bought the first thing, like, I, just thinking about it annoys me. Um, we did have good moments, like, we... Obviously, if we were together that long, and if I said yes to his proposal, obviously, we had good mo moments. One of them, one of our most romantic moments that we used to have was when I lived with my friend. Um, we couldn't smoke inside, so we'd go outside. 
and parking lot to smoke and our um our wedding song was supposed to be I'll Be by Edwin McCain, you know that song it goes I'll be your crying shoulder Well, back then I had a good voice before I had this trach Um, so, uh, at night we would dance Slow dance in the parking lot while I sang our wedding song Um, and that was that was one of our very few romantic, like, moments that we had together. Um, he wasn't, he didn't know how to be, like, a boyfriend to a girl. Um, and obviously I didn't realize that until it was too late. So, we were engaged, I was planning our wedding, I had already picked my maid of honor, and my bridesmaids, and, um, we had set a date, I think it was September of 2010 we were supposed to get married um I don't remember the day he proposed to me I don't remember the day we got together like we didn't have any anniversaries it was it's kinda sad like that we didn't, didn't mark anything but I'm kinda glad now because then I would think back to those whenever it was that date and be like oh why was supposed to, this is when blah 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 so okay so um so yes we were engaged and I was planning the wedding and then boom I got into the car accident and uh he took it well, well at first like you know when I was if you watched my origin story you know how bad off I was in the beginning and um he was there every day um after work or when he didn't have work he was there all day he was there every day um that I was in Albany Med and um And, uh, the funny thing is, my dad had always hated him, and after I got into my accident and he was there every day, my dad was like, I was wrong, you actually found a really good guy, and I'm sorry that I doubted him. And that, that I find that hilarious, because then he showed his true colors and just, anyway, <clears throat> So, he was there every day. Alright, for some reason they shipped me off to Georgia, as some of you know. And, um, my family, meaning my mom, my dad, my two brothers, uh, they went and my fiancé went with them. And they were there for a week. And, um... That was the last time I ever saw him. Um, but it's not the last time I ever spoke to him. So let me just get through the whole thing. Um, so they were there for a week and they left. After a week. And I was in Georgia by myself. And uh, he was supposed to come back in February. Um... They were there in early December, and he was supposed to come back with my grandma and my uncle in February, uh, near my birthday. My birthday was the 14th, Valentine's Day, whatever. And, um, so he evaded my grandmother for the longest time when she was trying to get the money for the ticket the plane ticket that she had already bought for him 
and she finally, like, just went to his house and was like, hello, and he just was like, oh, I don't have the money, and I can't get out of work, and blah, 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 and my grandmother was like, well, you could have told me this before I bought your ticket, so then she was out hundreds of dollars because of him, and so, um, my grandma and my uncle were up in Georgia with me, and my friend that got in the accident with me surprised me. She was there, too, with her father. And so on my birthday, um, my friend, my best friend that was there, she could read my lips perfectly, and nobody else ever could. So, um, well, her and Julie could. And, uh... So, we called him on my birthday, and she told him everything that I was saying. There was a lot of expletives and curse words, and uh, she was like, just to let you know, this is Danielle, this is not me saying this to you. He just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, that's all he said, and... Uh, my grandma was like, good for you, he deserved that, and yeah, he did, anyway. So, moving along, um, every time I tried to call him after that, because they would deflate my cough and then I could talk, and I said I'm like a robot, and, um, they, he would never answer the phone, and we got him one time, uh, because I used one of the nurse's, like, cell phones, she let me use it, and he, like, accidentally answered, and he didn't mean to, and, um, I was like, hi, and he's like, he's like, who's this, and I'm like, it's Danielle, and he's like, oh, and, like, he hadn't heard my voice in, like, six months, like, he hadn't s spoken to me, fit, like, actually spoken to me, and he didn't even mention it. He just went, started talking about him winning a bingo and, like, this dumb shit about himself. Didn't even ask me how I was doing. Um, nothing like that at all. So, uh, after that call, I kind of was like, just, I didn't know how to feel. I was upset. I wrote this poem, I don't have time it, to do it now, because uh, my machine is saying I only have 17 minutes and I'm at 13 now. So, okay, um, so, blah blah blah, uh, I finally leave Georgia and I go get back to New York, and I'm in Kingston, which granted is an hour away from where he and, like, my parents and, um, my friends lived. It was, like, an hour drive. But he never came to see me, and I was like, all right. He never answered my text message. Well, I couldn't text at that time. I couldn't even move my hands. Never mind. He never answered any calls. My dad finally got him, uh, and this is the last time I spoke to him. Um... And my dad had to speak for me because I hadn't had my flate, cuff deflated and, yeah. And he was like, sorry I haven't uh, visited you yet. Uh, work's been crazy and uh, my car's acting up and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why don't you just break up with me? Like, why are you doing this? It's, it's irritating. Like, you need to just like cut it and so that like I can heal and he was like don't do this why are you doing this like stop talking like that you're ruining this conversation and blah 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 and that's the last time that we spoke uh he never broke up with me the only reason uh I knew that we broke up or found out is that my best friend found his Craigslist ad 
uh, looking for male companions. Um, I won't <sighs> you know, let me go into detail because just talking about this makes me mad and makes me hate him so, or dislike him a lot. Um, it was uh, an ad about wanting to give oral sex to multiple uh, male partners and wanting to be covered in semen. Yep. So that is how I found out that we had broken up. And then I looked at his Facebook and it said gay completely, not bi, just gay. So that is how I found out. And he was never man enough to break up with me. And and now a lot of people hate him for it, uh, including myself. So that is the story. Um, let me know what you think, and let me know if you've been in a similar situation. Uh, like, subscribe, or don't. Live your life. Peace out.